What is up everybody? Meriden Gaming here. We're back for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Tank Showcase and Review. Today we're taking a look at the Tier 8 American Heavy Tank, the M3Y. So as you can see, this is a little bit different from the uh, the tanks in my previous couple of videos. This is not a standard American style tank. Uh, this is the newer Yo style. Um, although it really doesn't have the Yo style front quite yet, it is very close because it's starting to get this more egg-shaped turret uh, that is synonymous with the M5Y. Uh, although it does have like the standard turret where it sits on the ring. Um, the whole of it actually reminds me a little bit more of the medium tanks because you got this really long upper plate, but it's decently armored, not great. Uh, but then, yeah, this is where it shines. Because of the egg shape of this turret and the slope, yeah, you got a pretty hefty bit of armor in the front. Uh, a lot of stuff is going to either ricochet or have trouble getting through it at the very least. You do have a cupola on top, um, but what looks like a viewport here is actually not too much of a weak point. Let's go ahead and look at the actual armor model. So yeah, as I was saying, see this kind of has a boat shaped hole here. But yeah, look at this. I mean, 240, 236, 233. Uh, that's pretty good for hull. And then you get over 300 uh, in a lot of the front of this turret, which is uh, pretty good. Um, of course, this is with just 208 pin. Let's go ahead and bump it up to closer to 50. Yeah, you definitely have to hide that hull or use your gun depression because uh, this does have the standard American 10 degrees of gun depression to make yourself uh, near impenetrable at tier 8. Um, once you start getting tier 9, tier 10s, they will be able to go through that. They'll start to be able to go through your uh, upper turret. But yeah, you definitely have to hide this. This is one of the downsides to this tank, that spot here. And these two little balls right here, for some reason, um, are kind of weak points because they stick out. Uh, as you can see from the top, they stick out a little bit where they can hit you there, although that's a very, very small target, uh, to be honest. Uh, but you do have kind of that boat-shaped hole where it's got the rounded side, so you can side-scrape with this. Um, although I would probably say you can probably reverse side-scrape, except for this point right here. That is going to be a major weak point um, to try to side-scrape with, maybe from the front. But of course, then you have this. So, yeah, maybe reverse side-scraping with this will work really well, although you really want to be up on a hill. That's going to be your go-to spot in order to uh, do a lot of damage there, or with low rubble that hides your little plate. Go ahead and get to the comparison. So, of course, I play on the North American server. So this is what I see whenever I go into tier 8 matches with tech tree tanks, of course. I'm only comparing tech tree, not premium, because, uh, of course, this eh, it does all right against premium, uh, from what I've seen. Uh, but we got the standard T32 American Heavy Tank, the classic tank. Uh, you know, the big old turret with quite a bit of armor. The Carnarvon. Carnarvon? I don't know. I can never pronounce this thing right. Uh, but yeah, the British one. Uh, this is where the tank actually starts getting good down the British line. Uh, once you get past those, uh, the 5, 6, and 7 which are a pain to grind. I'm almost here. I just got the Black Prince about halfway done. Uh, but yeah, this is where the British line really starts getting good. Uh, the IS-3 for people going for the 277 or the IS-7. And of course the Tiger II for those people going for the 100. Um, you can see whatever the other one is because I can't think of that off the top of my head. Tiger P, or is that the one before that? But from the German line for people going towards the mouse uh, is the other thing. Of course the IS-3 I think also it branch off into the one that gets the 705 as well? I don't think it does. I think that's a different tank. I think that's the previous tank. Anyway, yeah. You'll see this one a lot at this tier. Um, and then usually the T32 quite often as well. But anyway, let's get to the stats. So uh, this is going to be <laughs> kind of the standard American thing uh, that you see in a lot of their tanks in this game. It's right in the middle. Um, it's not the worst DPM, but it's definitely not the best. It's not the worst, well actually it is the worst penetration. Um, so you definitely will probably have to pack quite a few gold rounds, especially when you face tier 10s, you're going to need a lot of gold rounds. Damage, right in the middle. Not as low as the, uh, Carna, Carna, um, 
Not as low as the British one, because I'm not going to be able to pronounce the name today, apparently. Um, but it does have more damage just because of the fact that it does have slightly slower reload time compared to the Carnivon. Carnot? Carnot? Yeah. This thing. Um, but much faster than IS-3. We can get this down to where we can almost get two shots in. Um, and then not quite compared to the T-32 and the Tiger II. Um, yeah, this basically has the same gun. But these other ones will out damage you just because they have more alpha and more penetration. So you definitely have to rock gold against some of these higher tier tanks, or higher damage tanks. Shell velocity right in the middle, yep. Mm -hmm. Not great, not bad. You do have to lead, um, although you really don't have the ability to snipe all that well. Uh, just because the gun dispersion is not quite there to snipe with. A uh, good amount of rounds in your... Um, ammo capacity uh, so you can take a little bit of everything with this and not have to worry too much about running out aim time 2.21 not great not bad but for a medium range brawler this is perfectly fine and usable same thing with the dispersion uh, this is definitely more of a medium range kind of tank not a trying to snipe enemies across the map kind of tank uh, as opposed to the carnivon did I actually say that right i'm not sure we'll just ignore it um and of course Tiger 2 and the IS-3. IS-3 is known for having a fairly slow um, aim time compared to everything else. And then we get down to gun depression 10. Yep, just like the T-32 and the Carnivon, uh, but much better than their Russian and German counterparts. That's where you have to make this tank work, is on those hills using that 10 degrees of gun depression. Speed, faster side of all of these. Um, although it's it's right in the, it's not the lightest tank, but it's also not the heaviest tank. So you can get up hills and into positions faster than a lot of the other tanks will be able to get there. And you basically are just holding it until your heavier dudes come up and help support you. And then we get down to, that's right, the armor. 279 in the frontal turret. Other than the T-32, yeah, best in class. And because of that nice little egg shape, very hard to penetrate, trust me. Uh, hull is also pretty good, not great. That upper slope really helps, uh, especially if you get it up angled. It's ricochets all day long with this thing. So, yeah, I face these quite often in my medium tanks, and it's very difficult to combat them. Yeah. And then we finally get down to the view range, 390, which is kind of weird because I feel like this tank feels like it sits up high. And yet it doesn't have the greatest view range. Um, but of course it's much better than the IS-3. Of course the IS-3 is very short. Uh, and the Tiger II is kind of right in the middle. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get to that replay. So today we have Ruby CZ. Um, going to, well, that could be a guy named Ruby. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to watch them in their M3Y on... Is it Tundra, right? I can never remember the name of this map. Tundra, yes. Uh, definitely going to be able to make use of that gun depression for sure in this battle. So she's go she or he is going to be facing a Patriot, an AMX-30. I don't see those too often. Uh, and of course there's an IS, a KV-3, a Tiger-1. But those are all lower. So shouldn't have too much of a problem with those. Oh, going for the hill. Yep, that's a great spot to be. With this tank, you could play either side, honestly, because there is uh, some rubble on the other side that you can make good use of. T-3485M. Yep, see one of those every time I'm in anything with tier 6s. That's considered probably the best pound-for-pound -pound tank. Uh, not a just tier 6. It's considered one of the best tanks overall. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yep. Smack him, smack him. Boom! Oh, caught him on fire. Waited until she could get... He or she... I'm going to say she fits it's Ruby. Look at that. Two fires in a row. That guy's going to die to fire. There you go. Yep, waited until that fuel tank came around. Oh, the AP has come up along the edge. I was kind of wondering because they, we hadn't seen that AP. You know what? You gotta be careful pulling too far forward, you're gonna get hit. Yeah, right there. Because they don't have enough people over here. They only have 
Ruby and the E34. I smack him if he pulls out. Uh, he's gonna take shots and stuff in the back. Yeah, kind of try to yeah position your position yourself where you're not gonna get hit by that AP and deal with one target at a time. That's the goal here. Already got one kill. Nice. She only. As long as they only uh, don't reveal their, no, as long as they only reveal their turret, they should be fine against that KV3. Got the gun depression to peek over the top of this pretty well. This is a really good position. Another hit. Oh, for only 240. That's not. That's a very low roll. Went up a little bit too far. I took a shell to. I would say probably the. Yeah. Oh, actually in the side. Oh. Went angled quite far enough around. Oh, another low roll. The, uh, the, it looks like the track absorbed quite a bit of that. There you go for the kill. And not doing great. Already down to a quarter of their health. 2100 APX. Problem is, that's an auto loader, I think. You don't think you have to be sure not to. And then you got artillery, too. Now, this is uh, the first one of the first tanks to get that dual um, track. Watch my clock. Ah, low roll again. Wow. First was getting a few good. Higher rolls, but then yeah, those r low rolls kicked in. Two oh seven, two two three. Do they have the best gun on this? They they may not have the best gun. Oh, that was close. Oh, their base is getting captured. But this is a good spot to defend the base from. Actually, as long as someone can spot, you've got really good angles to a lot of these areas. Yeah. Oh, see, that's the one problem that, um, that Patriot, oh, the Patriot's not in the cap, it's the Steyr that's in the cap. Looks like this T-34 has an angle on them, maybe? Oh, the Bist took care of it. Yeah, AT-8, those are, can be a pain unless you can hit them in the side. Best option is, if you can, to track them. Yeah, look at that, just gonna go right through that close. Actually making good use, uh, I would say this doesn't, isn't the most accurate, but right now it's getting good accuracy. There you go. Right now we're plate. Oh, and track them at the same time. Okay, you're not going to be able to... Oh, nice. Tuck that one right in there. Getting lucky with some of these shells. There you go. There's another kill. Already up to four kills. 4,500 damage, 1,200 block. Yep, keep popping that one, get rid of it. Oh, Ricochet. That's unlucky. The Ferdinand on the edge of that cap circle? Better's gonna try to spot four and three. They really need to get over there and defend the cap. The reset. They're, the problem is they're down a few tanks. Nice. Nice. Oh, oh no. Here comes the Patriot. Oh, and the artillery. Be able that Patriot can reload pretty quick. Yeah, the artillery is probably gonna finish them off. I did not catch whether or not this was a win or not. Now, see if the setter was smart, since they know where the tiger is, the setter should be able to go and reset 
real quick. Got six kills, almost six thousand damage. Yeah, they they wait a little bit too long for that. I don't know why the setter is not going to reset. They tried to say that's probably going to be the end of it. Yep, that's going to be it. That's a shame. The N3 played very well in this game, overall, and then died at the end. It's kind of messed up, though, because the battle was already over, and yet they were still able to fire again, well, way after the end of the battle. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the final stats of the game. So, let's go right over here. So, Ace, Tanker, Bruiser, Arsonist, because she did kill that one tank by setting it on fire. He or she. I keep saying she because I'm used to Ruby being a uh, feminine or female name. Uh, Duelist, Fire Perfect, High Caliber, and Top Gun. So, yeah, not too shabby. 7 kills, 6,500 damage, 2,300 blocks. So, you can see this thing is definitely a brawler of a tank. I uh, did take a few uh, shots there early in the game where they were shooting kind of down on the plate, so it was not as thick because of the angle of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the team score, though. Uh, of course, at the top here, yeah, more damage than the top two, almost three enemy players combined. That's kind of ridiculous. But anyway, this is in Gaming. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If there's a specific tank you want to see next, um, just comment on the most current uh, video uh, of the Tech Tree Tanks reviews, and I'll get that one out first. Um, as long as I do, I queue up several, so it may be a couple past whatever I'm recording. But anyway, this is Meriden Gaming, and I'll see you on the battlefield.